hello, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast. The spiritual leader here back with you. Uh, Laura, we were talking last week about the next generation. We kind of got into things like uh, the moving of the spirit, the importance of reaching back to the next generation. I think we spent the majority of the, the latter part of the podcast talking about how important it is to have our children and grandchildren in church. Well, really like the role of the older generation to make sure at least those that are under their watch that they do their job. Good Lord. I don't even know what to say to that. That I, it's so simple, but what you just said, it, it, I don't even know how to explain it. It just like touches me so deeply. It's our job. Well, I was it reading, I read this scripture during prayer the other day, and it was just powerful. Mm. And it's in Judges chapter 2, starting in verse 7. It says, And the Israelites served the Lord throughout the lifetime of Joshua and the leaders who outlived him, those who had seen all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. So those who had, you know, they had been rescued from Egypt. They had seen all the wondrous uh, miracles that the, God had performed. The walls of Jericho coming down. Yeah, and they all saw those all kings of that. they overthrew. And so they, they had seen all of this. It said, Joshua, son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died at the age of 110. They buried him in the land. He had been allocated in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash, after that generation died, after Joshua's generation died, another generation grew up who did not acknowledge the Lord or remember the mighty things he had done for Israel. Um, and I'm, I'm listening In one to generation. It, I'm listening to it different than what you said the other day. So I'm seeing there's a little bit of a gap. There's a problem there. Something yeah. happened with the, the generation that actually experienced everything. Yeah. They did not... They must not have sat down and taught the next generation yeah. or told them. Yeah. You know, the, the Jewish culture in general, you can see throughout Scripture and, and even in modern times, they are good about going back over and, and celebrating those different things, the feasts and different things that have meaning in the, in the Jewish faith. But something was off here with yeah. this generation. They one must not generation. have done that. <laughs> and what you're saying, Laura, one generation, they forgot yeah. about all that God had done. So the point is, it can take it can happen in one generation. It can if the older generation does not teach, if the older generation does not God. position that younger generation in a place where they too can encounter God, where uh, they too can see God's glory and, and, and miracles. You know, before I get into some of these verses, I'm just thinking like super practically, and we said this the other day in a service here at Melody Church, was what can someone in the older generation do? And I'm thinking about like my parents, they're, you know, older, older than I am, obviously, and they are a part of a church. You know, what can that next or the older generation do? And it's right in front of us. They can do things that will affect the transference of God's word and anointing to the next generation. Yeah. How do you do that? Serving in those different capacities, partnering financially with yeah. your church. Yeah. I mean, Laura, we give, if you ever look at what people spend their money on, like you could look at, you know, different websites to show the industries and how much money spent. The pet industry alone is like unbelievable. Mm -hmm. People spend ungodly amounts of money on everything under the sun. And I'm thinking to myself, so, why not put it into... Well, why not send a youth to youth camp? Why not sponsor the... Why not that, send them to on a missions trip? Why not sponsor the programs that your church is building to actually help reach the next generation? Yeah. Because it's those little things, if they're from the Lord, they will make big differences yeah. in this next generation. Well, even your mom, I'm thinking she has a grandson up uh -huh. there that's a teenager and yeah. she started bringing him to youth at the church that they attend yep. and he got involved. And yep. I just like, she was just transporting him, him there. Down. They were responsible for kind of helping facilitate sending him down here to go to a Holy Ghost youth camp. Yeah. And it really had an impact on him. Yeah. I mean, I think he kind of had a little bit of a turn of direction in his yeah. life, you know, started getting more connected with the Lord. Yes. And I thought, look yeah. at that little, wow. Just wow, one, it that. was one week, one transformative week. And they that experienced. kind of facilitated that yeah, and made they that made happen. It happen. We were reading the other day, and I just can't get enough of this. 
you read the statistics uh, of the older generation. You said the most, uh, whatever the productive. word, productive years of mm-hmm. um, a person's life are from 60, 60 to, to 70, 70 years old. The most productive yeah. is from 60 to 70. The second most productive years, 70 to 80. 70 to 80. And the third mm-hmm. most productive, 50 to 60. So basically from 50 to yeah. 80 years old is the most hands down yeah productive years of a person's life on the earth 50 to 80 years old 60 to 70 being the the most yeah well you know even i'm thinking like just some other practical ways too because if you know you're in that 50 to 80 then chances are you have grandchildren or even great grandchildren i'm thinking you know you took them to lunch once a week once every other week and just kind of mentored them, poured into them, listened to them, find out where they're at, what's going on, and just, you know, surrounding them with faith and love. How about about just praying for them, too? Oh, absolutely. I'm saying, like, adding that to that. Yeah, but something so simple and so practical can just make a tremendous difference. Somebody said this the other day. Spiritual things will make a difference. Yeah. You may not see it right at first, but just know that spiritual things, there, there is a harvest to those spiritual Ooh. seeds that you are sowing. I love that. And, and you will, you, you'll, see, you'll see a harvest from that. Somebody said the other day, uh, talking about the young, um, they said when it comes to the relationship between an older and a younger person, uh, young people in general, they may come off as, you know, like not interested, but... There is really something in them. Yeah, it's it's almost like instinctual or spiritual component of us that we're built to receive from the older generations. And what does the enemy do? What does this world do? He tries to divide, Ugh. tries to pit us against one another, or you know? just separate us in our lifestyles. Yeah. Like the the older retirement, and let's get a motor home, and let's travel the world. The, the young, you know, they're kind of going in their own, like, education and this and sports. And it's kind of like we're going in two different directions yeah. oftentimes. No. That's, that's not by accident No, either. and I, I think this is a scripture I shared the other day, too, Psalms 145, verse 4. It says, let each generation, each generation, tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. So it's like that's the job of this older generation. Say it again. I want to hear it that It says again. let each generation. So each generation has a, a job, a mandate. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Oh, my. Let them proclaim your power. What is the heading of that? I want to mark that down for my notes. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll <laughs> I'm find just it later. Copy and paste to the wow. verse. Um, along those lines, I have here Deuteronomy 6, mm-hmm. uh, 6 and 7. It says these commandments... Uh, yeah. that I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Yeah. These commandments the Lord told Israel, impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, and when you lie down and when you get up. Isn't that powerful? Like what are you going to talk about? What are you talking about with your children? We're talking about God. We're talking yeah. about God's word. His faithfulness. His uh, you know, one thing you and I have honoring we've God. done a little bit better um, at over the years is we've been completely open about our faith, about our worship of God, about our times of prayer. I mean, it's not uncommon for the kids to come home from wherever they are, and you and I are in the office, and we're praying. We're worshiping God. I'm laying out on the floor on my face, and our kids have grown up in a home that they're used to that. It, somebody may say, oh, well, that's because you're a minister, you're a pastor, or whatever. No, we're Christians. We're, we're, we're Christians before we're pastors, yeah. and we don't, we're not just doing that to try to get something from God. We're doing that because we're connected to God, yeah. but the point is our children have seen that modeled, and maybe through some of their teenage years, uh, different times in their lives individually, they may or may not have been, you know, fully engaged or interested in the things of God, but that didn't cause us to hold back. Mm -hmm. We modeled it in front of them. And I think uh, somebody said, well, it's been said a million times, a picture's worth a thousand words. Somebody said, people do what you do. They Mm -hmm. don't do what you say. Yeah. They do what you do. And, that book uh, somebody gave you years ago, Sticky Faith, mm-hmm. I don't remember who it was by, but 
they said par- children or teenagers need to see the faith that they're seeing in church. They need to see it at home. Yeah. They need to see it model. They need to talk about it at home. Yeah. If they're having a problem, like you are constantly talking to our kids about, mm-hmm. and I do too, but you're more engaged with them on a daily basis in conversation. Mm-hmm. You're constantly talking about scripture. Yeah. You're constantly talking about what's God's plan. Have we prayed about that? Mm-hmm. Do, let's pray right now about it. Yeah. What does the Bible say about this? I mean, it is a part of who we are. And I can hear again somebody saying, well, that's because you're a pastor. My God, no, we we care about our children. Yeah. We, we want them it's to experience. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's not a title. But this connects, Laura, with what we've been saying. Yeah. How do you get the things of God to the next generation? How do you... These are some practical ways. I want to read that again, uh, or the next verse on that. Uh, it was Deuteronomy 6. And you need to write these down. We'll find out what that other heading was. But uh, Deuteronomy 6, 6 and 7. Mark it down. Go go back over and read it. Um, I love this. Uh, oh, gosh, where was it? Uh, Proverbs. Uh, it basically, the King James says, 22, 6, says, Start children off on the way they should go, or yeah. train up a child, King James says, in the way they should go. Um, and when they're old, they will not turn from it. Yeah. So train up a child in the way they should go. One translation says, train a child or instruct them in what they're bent towards, meaning uncover their gifts in God and their graces and help them grow in that. But just generally speaking, Laura, train up Children in the things of God. Yeah. And then when they're old or older, they will not stray from that. Mm-hmm. My concern for this this current generation, the current younger generations, is that they have not had that those foundational years. There's that no tethering. They have no reason to be at church. Yeah. There's there's no anchor. They're not seeing it at home. They're not seeing it the real genuine Christianity lived out in front of them. Yeah. It hasn't been put into their heart enough. Yeah. So now when they come of age to make their own decisions, the the current trends say they're out. Yeah. They're leaving the church not by the not by the hundreds, by the millions. millions. Why? They may have been somehow connected to church as a child, maybe through their parents or grandparents, but whatever the connection was, it wasn't enough. No. And if they were in a church where there was no moving of the Holy Spirit, then it's just religion. It's yeah. tradition, and nobody wants I, that. Well, this new next generation doesn't want that for sure. They yeah. want something that's authentic and real. Yeah, I agree. And these are the things uh, again that are just so important. So, uh, if you're just looking back, you know, just practically speaking, what can can we do to reach the next generation? Yeah, I think we've got to live it in front of them. Yeah, we can't just give them, you know, words and sermons. We've got to actually have a living faith with the Lord Jesus Christ that our kids and grandkids and, and the next generation, when they see us, and I'm talking about you, when they see you, they see Jesus. They see a real, living, abiding faith in yeah. God, a real deal. I'm not talking about I go to church. If going to church were to get the, the thing solved, we'd probably be done already. No, we've got to live out our faith. Yeah. I think at home, Laura, we've got to talk about things with our children. Um, I think as far as our connection with the next generation in church, we've got to have churches that are going after the next generation. Yeah. Um, We didn't get into this on the last podcast, but uh, Malachi 4, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I have that on my notes. I had it on my other, but it basically says, I will send Elijah. I always get those two mixed up. I think Elijah or Elisha. I think it's Elijah. Before the, the, the coming of the day of the Lord or whatever, and it said, He will cause the hearts of the fathers yeah. to turn towards the hearts of the children. Yeah. And it, the last sentence of that book of Malachi says, If this doesn't happen, I will send a curse mm. on the earth. Yeah. I don't know what all that looks like, but I. But look, there's a turning there's of that turning. older generation yeah. towards this younger generation. And I see like the heart turning, like the love, the compassion, stirring on the inside, like we've got to reach this generation. No more can we allow the enemy to just go in and just uh, uh, really destroy and ruin and twist this young generation's lives even before they've gotten started. Mm. I mean, so many just, they, they experience, they deal with, they've seen 
far too much. And so it's like I see like this, that older generation, it's like they're rising up and they're stirring on the inside like, all right, you know, we, we've got our battle plan. Hmm. We're, we're going into uh, to war and we're going to wage war against the enemy and we're going to make sure that this next generation will not be lost to the enemy and to this world. Yeah, and we've got to all do our part. Um, and, I was, and, I, and I believe, too, like maybe you're sitting there and you're like, I don't really know what I can do. I don't have children in my home. Maybe my grandchildren, I don't have any yet or they're far away or whatever. I believe if you ask, ask the Lord and ask him, say, what, what can I do right now? I believe, no, I know the Lord will lead you, prompt you, put something on your heart. You know, there may be a... a teenager that's kind of you're in and around or I don't know wherever you're at in life Mm -hmm. but I know the Lord will lead you if you ask him to and then our job is simply to be obedient you know sometimes we'll try and oh I didn't want to do that or that's a little too challenging or I'm not comfortable with that or that's too out of my comfort zone but I believe if we're just obedient to step out with whatever the Holy Spirit is leading us to do then it's like he'll give us more and really that influence will grow and we'll have a greater impact on this next generation. Yeah, and and you alluded to it earlier. They're looking for something that's real. Yeah. Uh, a youth pastor friend of mine that works for a large ministry, uh, he said to me the other day, this generation has seen what is fake. Yeah. They've seen what's uh, not authentic, and they've actually been now prepared to see Jesus, yeah. what is real. And that's our job is to make room for that to happen, to, you know, sponsor, to give finances, to serve, to to pray, pray, to, you know, bring them to church, to do our part. Maybe it's serving the nursery or the toddlers, whatever, something. Many years ago, we had a grandma that started bringing their granddaughter to youth. And that youth kind of just had influence with you know, their friends and they wanted to start coming to church. Well, that grandma started loading them all up in her little SUV. And then before too long, she had outgrown the SUV and she started taking a church van. I mean, they'd pile like 20 kids in there. And then before too long, she had to recruit another grandpa uh, to to oh, drive man. another van. I think they were bringing like literally... <laughs> 40 to 50 or more youth and every these, week. That's and these, crazy. <laughs> and these were two. It was a grandma, a grandpa, and what did they do? They just uh, loaded down the I vans. I forgot about the grandpa in that story. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, um, he was up there in years. And he just actually recently went home to be with the yeah. Lord. And what a what a tremendous testimony. You know, truthfully, Laura, he's going to be rewarded in heaven <laughs> for that. It's powerful. He sowed into the next mm-hmm. generation. And um, I believe God's going to honor that uh, in his yeah. life and, and even the, the one grandma yeah. who served <laughs> the next generation. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's interesting because the devil really attacked both of those individuals' grandkids. And um, I just really have a heart for those two individuals' grandkids. And uh, what a faithful seed that they sowed into yeah. the kingdom to help other teenagers yeah. really experience the power of God. And we did just that. They experienced the power of God, which is... What we did in our part as being over a service, we allowed and made room room. for the Spirit of God to move. We preached the Word of God Mm -hmm. with authority and boldness. They need to hear the truth. Stop playing patty cake. I mean, the devil's thrown every single thing he has at this next generation. He's he's showed his hand. He's, He's showed everything he's got. He's holding nothing back. And it's our turn now, by the grace of God, the power of God, the love of God, to step up to the next level and actually care and show by our actions and lifestyles that we really do love Jesus. And with his love, we really love the next generation. It's so important, Laura. And these are the days the hearts of the fathers are being turned to the hearts of the children. If that doesn't happen, it will be not good at the end of that. So let the Lord Mm. turn your heart yeah. To the next generation. You don't have to make yeah. a bunch of stuff up. He'll show you what your part is. Yep. And whatever he shows you, you do it. Amen. Amen. Isn't that good stuff? Uh, boy, I tell you, it's easy for Laura and I to talk about the next generation. It's just something God's put in our heart. Yeah. Uh, and it's not an age thing. It's just the Holy Spirit saying, you got to take this thing seriously. Yeah. Amen. Hey, listen, we love you. We're praying for you. Believe in God uh, for you and with you. We believe that your best is yet to come as you put Jesus first in your life. Uh, We love you, and we'll see you real soon. God bless.